So the idea of this, this webinar today is to discuss some of the accessibility features built into iPhone and iPad that can help people with vision impairments, mm. um, ranging from magnification to speech and a combination of the two, et cetera. I'm gonna be using an iPhone 13 Pro for this demonstration. I do have an iPad with me as well. I'll, I'll use that a bit later for something else. But essentially, what I'm going to do on this iPhone is exactly the same on an iPad. Okay, mm. so they're, they're the same things. Now yeah. I've got I've got uh, a screen reader running on this iPhone because I need it for myself. So we'll discuss the screen reading aspect of the iPhone first, and then we'll look at the other options afterwards. So you'll hear my phone speaking to me, and for you, someone like yourself, Michael. Yeah. This is the way you would need to use the phone, having no or little vision. Yes. So the first option I want to discuss is called voiceover. And this is, as I mentioned a second ago, it's is a screen reader. So it reads the contents of the screen. And that's not to be confused with those voice assistants like Siri or the Google's voice assistant or Alexa. It's it's purely reading what's on the screen, nothing else. Mm. Okay, and how how it works is I, I turn it on. There's there's three ways of turning voiceover on. I'll discuss a couple of them now. So the first way is if your phone is connected to Wi-Fi uh, or using mobile data, you can ask Siri to turn voiceover on or off. Now it depends on which model of phone you have and how you activate Siri. So on this phone, I don't have what the old fashioned home button that's at the bottom center of the screen. So in this instance, I'm gonna hold down my power button or the, what's called the side button. And I'm going to ask Siri to turn off voiceover because it's already on and then to turn it on again. So here we go. 11. Turn voiceover off. Voiceover off. Okay, and voiceover is now gone off. And if I wanted to turn voiceover on, Turn voiceover on. That's great. <laughs> 1119. Okay, so let's turn voiceover back on. So just by asking Siri to turn voiceover on or off, that will work well. Another option for turning voiceover on and off is to press the button on the side of your phone three times quickly. So I'm going to press that three times quickly now. 1119, voiceover off. And the voice has gone off. So this is now just a standard iPhone that anybody would use, any sighted person would use. I'll turn it back on again by pressing the button three times quickly. Voice over on. And it's come back on. So it's a fairly quick press. It's press, 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 or click, 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 depending on how you like to pronounce it. And the voice comes on. There is a, a caveat to that particular option there. You need to set this feature up. OK, and I'll just take you through how to set that feature up on your device so that you can use the side button three times quickly or the home button if you do have a home button. So I'm going to go into settings. Oops. 11.20. BBC News. Void print trains. BBC News. So I'm going to ask Siri to open up settings for me. Open settings. Settings. Siri, open settings. <laughs> so open settings. And when you do that, Siri finds the settings app and opens it for you. And in this screen. Siri. Hey, Siri. Open settings. So the lady that's just asked Siri Ooh. to open settings. Could you mute your microphone for us? Certainly. Okay, so it's okay. Thank you. Is that Christine? Oh, Shirley. <laughs> oh, Shirley. Shirley, just mute your microphone, then you can say what you like to your phone. It won't make any difference. Thanks, Shirley. So in the settings screen, what we're going to be looking for is an option called accessibility. I'm just going to find that briefly. Mobile data. 
bus, first, low, first, display and homes, access, wallpaper, accessibility, button. So I'm going to find accessibility and I'm going to tap it. Physical and motor, heavy. And at the bottom of this screen, there is an option called accessibility shortcut. I'm just going to find that. The hyphen app settings, accessibility shortcut, voiceover. And I'm going to activate it. Configure and then triple hyphen click the. So this this option here, this screen here, is contains lots and lots of features that can be turned on or off using the side button or the home button on your device. And the idea is that the, the you only really want to have one of these options turned on, and that option is voiceover. So all the all the options in here you can turn on or off by tapping on them. So the only one that you want to be turned on is voiceover. Uh, so if you come into this screen and you see there's more than one on, tap it to turn it off. So once you've turned enabled voiceover, you can then close settings. FaceTime. And try out your side button or home button three times quickly, and it should work beautifully like this. Voiceover off. And it's now gone off, and I'll turn it on again. Voice over on. And I'll turn it back on again. I must confess, using the side button is not as easy as using that home button. If you have a home button, that's the easier option. The side button is a little bit more tricky to press. I think purely because of the location of it and the, the size of people's fingers and all those sorts of things. If you've got a case, for example, that can often get in the way. So I choose to turn Siri on and off myself, sorry, voiceover on and off myself by asking Siri to do it. So there are two main ways of doing that. The other way you can turn Siri on and off, sorry, voiceover on and off, is to go through the settings into accessibility, into voiceover, and then there's a switch in there for turning it on and off. The downside to that is you're going to need sighted assistance to do that if your sight isn't good enough. So that's why I don't tend to cover that very often. So can you still still see this phone I'm holding up? Pete, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, cool. So now we've got voiceover running. I'm going to just demonstrate how you can use it to find things on the screen. Now, as we all know, the icons on an iPhone screen and indeed on all, all uh, smartphones are pretty darn small and the writing underneath the icons is really small it's around about size six points so that's very small compared to ordinary ordinary print it's about half the size of ordinary print so you need pretty good vision to see that text so for many of us here who have got poor vision or no vision that's not a, that's not a goer is it so we need to find an alternative way of accessing these icons so with voiceover on, I'm going to just touch the screen. Podcasts. And wherever I wherever I touch, Email. the voice tells me what I'm touching. Voice green spanner. Bus checker. So I'm just touching these randomly. Lazarillo. Okay. So I'm just touching each item. And the beauty of that is I can find out what the icon is without actually opening it. It just tells you what the icon is. Another way I can navigate FaceTime. is to find the first icon on the screen, which in this case is, is FaceTime on my iPhone here. I'm sorry, with 14 participants, your audio is unmuted. Your video is <laughs> stop, stop. Sorry about that. And I'm going to imagine that there's a fly landed on my screen, and I want to swipe it off the screen. I'm just going to swipe to the right. Calendar. Wednesday, the 26th of July. Photos. And when I do that, voiceover moves to the next item and reads it out. I'll do that again. Camera. Notes. Reminders. Block. 11, 26. News. TV. Podcasts. App Store. And so on. I can go all the way through my screen until I get to the end. I can go backwards by flicking that fly off in the opposite direction. Podcasts. TV. News. And I'm only doing a very gentle touch here. It's not a stab or anything like that. It's a very light touch. Clock. 11 reminders. Notes. Camera. Photos. 
calendar, FaceTime, FaceTime. And I'm back at the beginning. I can't go any further. When I get back to the top corner, it makes a, a doink noise. I'm, I'm not sure whether you can hear this. FaceTime, FaceTime, FaceTime. Just indicates I can't go any further in that direction. So this is voiceover. I'm going to just show you a few more things I can do with voiceover before we move on to other things. So in essence, it's giving me the opportunity of finding out what's on the screen, just like a sighted person could see. I'm going to go into an option called BBC News and read the news headlines using voiceover. I'll find it on the screen here. Bus checker, easy weaver, page one of three, easy bus, be my eye, Lazarillo, trains. Prismo Go, voice dreams, BBC News. That's BBC News. I'm going to open that up. Now, to open it, I tap twice on the screen anywhere. Once, I, once I've found the icon I want, I, I do a tap, tap on the screen. I don't have to do it on the icon. I can do it anywhere on the screen because the last thing that VoiceOver spoke is what will be activated when I do the tap, tap. So I'm going to do a tap, tap. Top stories. BBC News. And menu. I've Button. opened up BBC News. And when you open up an app up, VoiceOver always starts at the top left corner. That's where it works from. So to read the, the screen, I can flick that fly off the screen to the right. And each time I do that, I'm going to read another piece of information. Let's just try this. Top stories. Heading. So that's the heading of the page. Barrage calls for whole nat West board to resign over Poop's leak full stop business. Button. Adult, comma, door, comma, frame, comma, tie, comma, wood process, live. I'm just going to change the setting here. Headings, language, for our kids, sound, punctuate, speak, punch, none. Sum, default, sound, kid, language, headings. Okay, so go again. Renters compete with 20 others in battle for a home. Business, button. Man's fight to clear name 20 years after rape conviction. Manchester, button. So each time I, I flick that fly off to the right, I, I move to another headline. <clears throat> Videos of the day. Button. Deadly Mediterranean wildfires kill more than 40. Euro. Button. So far, I've not found a story that's happy yet. Well, they're all gloom and doom, these stories. Let's find one that's happy yet. Junior doctors to strike for four days in August. Hell. Vino Mark's 85th birthday with Starfield edition. Entertainment and arts. Button. Okay. So the Beano is going to include many, many well-known celebrities in its next edition. Let's read about that. So I'm going to tap the screen twice, because that's the one I want. Beano, the commemorative Beano issue features Harry Styles and Adele. Image, <laughs> adult, illustrations. Beano.com. Get a celeb makeover. Hello from the other side. I wonder W-H-O-I-T-L-B. I secret not. D.C. Thompson, the commemorative Beano issue features Harry Styles. Left, and Adele top right. Okay, so it reads it out to me. Now, I can change the speed of the voice. That might be a bit fast for some people. I'll just turn that down here. Yes. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm using an option called the rotor. Now, I'm not going to cover this. This is way beyond the, the sort of like what we're trying to achieve here. Just going to change the setting. Sounds, punctuation, speaking rate, words, speaking rate, 50%. So I just made that a bit slower. Mimo Mark's 85th birthday with Adele. Harry Styles and Stormzy. Heading. Michael Glynn. 43 minute entertainment and arc, the Vivo, the world's longest running comic, has marked its 85th anniversary with guest appearances from Adele, Stormzy and Harry Styles. Okay, and I can read it in a number of different ways. I can read it character by character, word by word, line by line, or continuously. So I'll just do it continuously for about 20 seconds and see how it reads. The Vivo, the world's longest running comic, has marked its 85th anniversary with guest appearances from Adele, Stormzy and Harry Styles. The commemorative issue, out on Wednesday, also includes depictions of King Charles III and Queen Camilla. The guests were drawn after 3,000 children aged 7 to 14 were asked in a poll which celebrities they would like to see in cartoon form. So David Attenborough, Lewis Hamilton and Jill Scott all appear too. Footballer Marcus Rashford is in there as well after being voted as the most inspirational celebrity. I'll just stop it there. So you can see that this has given me the opportunity of reading the news, just like all my sighted colleagues and friends and family do. Although I am having to work a little bit harder to do that because I've got to learn how to use this piece of technology. Now, and that comes, that just needs time, dedication, and a lot of patience 
to learn how to use this technology. But it, this is all built into the phone. There's nothing extra here. This is part of the iPhone. And there are there are documentation, uh, sorry, there are tutorials and documents available that teach you how to use voiceover. But you do need time, dedication, and patience. Patience is perhaps the biggest thing because initially when you start learning how to use voiceover, you'll want to throw it out of the window, I'm, I'm, I assure you. I'm just going to change the voices. Let's have a look at some of the voices we've got available. Text select lines, words, character, headings, language. The English, us. So here's another voice. Spider-Man actor Tom Holland and Manchester City player Phil Foden also figured highly on the list of celebrities that they would like to be best friends with. So not quite, not in my view, not a very nice voice. Let's try another one. English. English, Australia. Here's an Australian lady. Harry Styles is a Beano cartoon character. Image, illustrations. DC Thompson slash Beano. DC Thompson slash Beano. Harry Styles is a Beano cartoon character wearing a heart print outfit and holding a whoopee cushion. And another voice. English, Ireland. I do like this voice. This is an Irish voice. And it has really got a good Irish accent. Adele, image, adult. DC Thompson, Adele is shown holding a Grammy Award while wearing a Beano's Better Than Vegas t-shirt, a reference to her residency of concerts. Okay, and one more voice. English, us. English, UK. And this is this, this, the, the typical one. Now, there are, there are other voices. There are South African accents, Indian accents, all English, but with an Indian or South African twang to the voice. And the voices are quite important because, like some of us here, you know, we might have a hearing difficulty as well. And different pitches and different tones can make things easier or harder to understand. So having that choice of voices is quite important. I, I like the, this one here. Since the Beano launched in Dundee in 1938, more than 4,000 issues have been printed featuring around 700 characters, such as Dennis, The Menace, and Nasha. The Bash Street. Okay. So that voice is my preferred voice, but there are lots of voices for different hearing hearing difficulties. I was going to close this down. Man's fight to clear name 20 BBC News. So I'm now going to use voiceover purely to get to some of these other features to show you. So, so unfortunately, you will hear voiceover talking away, but without voiceover, I'm afraid I can't get to these other features to show you. So... All of the features that make it easier for a, a person with vision impairment to use are situated in the settings app under the heading accessibility. I'm just going to go in there and find it. BBC, BBC iPlayer. Me, me, mail. Message. So, so, page. Easy. Bus. Be my. Lazarus. Pray. Prisma. Voice. BBC. BBC. Seeing AI. Contact. Settings. So I'm going to go into settings. Settings. Home screen. I'm Button. going to find the option called accessibility. Accessibility. Button. Physical and motor. And we'll have a little look at some of the options in here now. So the first option is voiceover. Touch. Button. Phys audio Set. Accessibility. Vision. Voiceover. Um. So voiceover Button. is that first option in this screen. Um, I guess the reason why they put it at the top is because if you have got sort of like that residual vision when you're using your sight, it's going to be easier to find it at the top than at the bottom, for example. So it doesn't mean to say it's the most important option, it's just where they've decided to situate it. The next option that we have in here is called Zoom. Zoom. Oh. And this oh. is a magnif magnifier. So I'm going to turn this on. Zoom. Off. Oh. Zoom. Zoom. Off. Oh. Zoom. Um, and when I turn Zoom on, I'm just going to turn VoiceOver off temporarily. VoiceOver off. The screen is magnified, much like a magnifier on a computer screen. You have different options. You can magnify the whole screen or part of the screen or the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen. I can change that magnification. I can make it really large. I'll bring that text back into view. It's gone that large, I can't see where it's gone. <laughs> so the text is 
huge or I can make it a bit smaller. So I'm just going to put my voice back on. Voice over on. Setting. Zoom. Um. You see how large that, that has gone. It's gone very, 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 very large. Zoom magnifies the entire screen. Now, the downside, of course, of having magnification on a phone, at least, is that you're only getting a very small amount of information on the screen at the time. And it may be that you decide, if you're using magnification, that you decide that this is just a bit too laborious, a bit too long-winded. There must be a quicker way of doing things. And that's where voiceover would be a preference over the magnification. But if your magnification was reasonably small, then that would be okay. You know, you could cope with that quite nicely. But I personally think magnification on an iPhone is pretty useless, to be honest. It's, it's, it's not a good experience at all. I'm going to turn it off for the time being. Speech off. Speech on. So, um, so I just wanted to draw your attention to that rather than suggest that you try and use it because it isn't a nice experience, I'm afraid. I'm going to suggest another alternative, though, which makes the text larger but doesn't take it off the screen like it does with Zoom. I'm going to go back to the previous screen. Zoom, so, heading, accessibility, back access, touch, button, physical and audio display. Display and text size. The next option I want to show you is display and text size. And there's a couple of nice features in here that can make a big difference. I'm going to go into that. Bold text off. Now you can make the text all bold if you wish. I think I believe that if you do that, you need to reboot your device for that that change to take effect. But that's not one of the ones I was going to show you. I'm going to show you the one called increased smart invert. Differentiate replaces smart, in, smart, in, smart invert off. Um. And with smart invert, it reverses the colors on the screen. So it gives you a, a black background with white text, as opposed to a white background with black text. And I've found that a lot of people that I, I work with prefer this option for two, two reasons, really. One, it reduces the glare coming from the screen. And two, it provides a higher contrast between the text and the background. So it's not necessarily that you find black the best color. It's just that it's making things stand out better. And you, you can use this in conjunction with voiceover. They work together. You don't have to have just the one. You can have two or even three features turned on at the same time. So I'm going to leave this on black for the moment. And I'm going to find another option here called larger text. Replaces use differentiate increase increase improve reduce trend on slash button shape larger text off and here's button. larger text it's, it is towards the top of that settings and display and display and brightness screen I'll just go in here larger accessibility sizes off and this is a little switch which I turn on or off and if I turn it on the text will change in size. And then at the bottom of the screen, I've got like a slider bar that goes from left to right. And I can slide it to, to the right to increase the size of the text or to the left to reduce it. Let's just see what it's on. 55% adjustable. I'm going to make that about 80%. 60, 70, 82%. And the text is now significantly larger. I'll make it 100. 91, 100%. Okay. And for those that can see that screen there, I'm going to go up and down and you can see the text size change. 91 per 82 per cent, 73, 64, 55 per 45, 36 per cent. And it's now gone back down to a really small size. So I'm going to put it back onto 80. 40, 56, 7, 82 per cent. And I'm going to close that screen down. Larger text. Oh. So now it's given me a similar appearance to, to using Zoom, but things aren't going off the screen like they were with Zoom. So this is quite a nice way of using your phone. And these settings, this setting will work in email, text messages, um, calendar, contacts, 
pretty much all of the apps that come with the phone, these this larger text will work with. I'm going to go into my email and show you how it works in the email. FaceTime, Safari, Messages, for up Mail, 56 on Mail. So there's my email there. Back button. Considerably easier to see than when, uh, instead of me having the black background and the normal text, that's considerably easier for me to see. To be honest with you, I still can't read that, but I know many people here will understand the benefit of this. So if I was to go down the screen, that bar, top unread, page two of each, each of these email messages is displayed in large print. Let's open one up. Apple News Plus, image. Good morning. From Apple News. Here's what to read this weekend. Part-time at article image, Apple News Plus, how to semi-retire to rural France. <laughs> That's quite nice, isn't it? How to retire to rural Somerset, in your case, Michael. Um, so the text is nice and large on the screen, and for many people, that would be sufficient for their needs. Okay, so that's not a bad option. Now, I'm using VoiceOver here to read this text out to me. There is an alternative to VoiceOver if you didn't really find that easy to use VoiceOver because of its somewhat complexity with all the different finger movements you have to make. There is another option, it's called Spoken Content. I was gonna go and turn this feature on. Mail, 55 unread emails. Home. I'm going to go back to settings. BBC News. BBC Seeing Content set, Map. Settings. One new back item. Back into settings. Settings. Accessibility. Back button. Now, I'm still in accessibility. That's where I was when I came out of it. So it's left me in the same place, which is quite handy because that's where I want to be. I'm going to choose the option called Spoken Content. Display and text suck, bold text, larger text, button shapes, on slash off label, reduce transpack, improve contrast, increase contrast, off, vision, display and text motion, spoken content. And here we are, spoken content. Now this option is really nice. Speak selection, off. So in here, I have some settings, got speak selection, speak screen, both of these need to be turned on for this particular feature. So I'm going to turn this one on. A speak button will appear when you select text. Speak screen on. That's already on. Swipe down with two fingers from the top of the screen to hear the speech controller on. Button. And speech controller is also turned on. So in this screen, I turn everything on. And then with, with that, I'm going to go back to the previous screen. Spoken content button. I'm actually going to turn the invert colors off for this purpose. Motion. Display and zoom. Display and text. Bold text. Larger button shapes. Um slash. Reduce. Improve. Increase. Increase. Different. Replace. Smart invert. Off. And go back to the standard colors. I'm going to leave the size the same. Now let's go back to my home screen. Settings. One new item. And we're going to go into text messaging um, no not going to go to mail mail, go to mail. 55 unread mail Apple now at the moment plus. voiceover still still running on here and I, i'm going to find this a bit tricky to do but i'll try my best okay here's what to part time vertical scroll button here's what to part time here from apple good morning from apple new good morning just give me one second good morning from apple new good morning apple news plus in 1140 inbox, fifth subject, go up, button, from Apple News, unread, Apple News. So what I'm trying to find is the speech controller, and I'll find it somewhere. Edit, inbox, heading, mailboxes, search, search field, edit, button. I'm, I'm sorry, I told you I find it's difficult to do, because there's a, on the screen, there'll be a little square, a little black square, and that's what's called the speech controller. I'm, I can't find it here, but I'll just tell you how it works. Okay, and when you tap on that little black box, a, a control panel pops up and you have options in there for playing and pausing the text, fast forwarding, rewinding, increasing and decreasing the speed. But you do need some 
reasonable vision to use this option. So it's an option really for somebody that's got a reasonable vision, but not clearly not correct vision, uh, who finds reading long passages of text difficult. And with that, you can touch the speech controller, tap the play button, and it will start reading the information from the screen to you. To pause it, you just tap the play button again, and it pauses it, and then you can rewind or fast forward. There's another option in there as well, whereby you can touch a button that's got the a shape of a hand. And when you do that, it means you can bring your finger down the screen. Expand unread. Apple News. Know the signs of vitamin B12 deficiency. And just Life, fish and shit shop unread. Apple Keep news moving your finger up and down the screen. Know the signs of vitamin B12 deficiency. And I've just, efficient shit shots are I've just found the option I was looking for. Unread. Apple News. Know the signs of vit search. Unread. Apple. Unread. Apple News. Search. Search field. Inbox. Head search. Inbox. Search. Unread. Apple. Mailboxes. Search. Search. Unread. Apple News. Verticals. Unread. Apple. Peter Rose. Peter, hello. Can you see that speech controller on the screen? Uh, yes, it's in the middle of the. Is it up here? Unread. At search. We're back to this. Inbox. I don't know if the uh, voiceover will bring it back. Where's it, where's it positioned, Pete? It's within. It's just below the heading Apple News, which is the next clickable okay. uh, link you've got. Inbox. Search. Search unread. Apple News. Know the signs of vitamin B12 unread. Apple News. Know the signs of vitamin. Expand speed. Right, right. Button. I'm just going to move it so I can find it better. Search. Search the inbox. Edit. Yeah. Inbox. Search. Is it at the top of the screen now, please? Or the voiceover moves to it unless you've got your finger on it. Unread. Apple News. Know the signs of vitamin B12 unread. Apple News. <laughs> inbox. Search. Search field. Uh, Unread. Apple edge. News. Can you see where it is now? Yeah, it's on the left edge, just underneath the top left corner. Search. Unread. Uh, Mailboxes. Search. Unread. Uh, Apple uh, News. I search. To touch it Expand speed. I've got it. I've got it. I've got yeah. it. Sorry. Expand speaking bar. So I've just put the speaking bar on the screen. Unread. Apple News. Uh, search. Rewind. And here, if I press play, I'm going to play, choose the play button. Unread. Apple News. Know the signs of vitamin B12 deficiency. Why fish and shit shots are disappearing and more. Saturday. Here's what to read this weekend. Unread. Apple Music. Special summer offer. Get three months free. The 19th of July 2023. Pause. I'll pause it there. So this speaking bar, or I call it a control panel, will allow me to read all sorts of things. I'm going to go into an email. Unread. Apple Fitness Plus. Get one select. Go in there. To books from. Speak on touch. Dim. Button. Rewind. Play. Button. Pause. Join today with no commitment. Unread. Apple News. 16 simple. And it's just reading out the screen to me. And more weekend reads. The 15th of July 2023. Here's what to read this weekend. Apple News, how to semi-retire to rural France, why people become hoarders and more. The 8th of July 2023, here's what to read this weekend. Unread. Get one Apple month free and make the most. Get, get one month free at from about. Add diary of a Titanic. Fast forward. Playback. Fast forward. of July. Fun. Play. Just paused it there. So that speaking bar Button. really is a nice feature. And Peter, who is one of our top volunteers, I would say that, Peter, not just because you're here. But you've invoked this with a lot of people, haven't you, in the past? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a fair number of teams to use it. It's slightly easier than uh, voiceover, which has got yeah. more sophistication as part of it. Yeah, yeah. But do you find that people sometimes find it hard to see the speaking bar, the, the little icon? I think if, uh, yeah, it does require being able to see it, to know which button if you want to pause and play. So yeah. it does require a degree of sight. But as you yeah. said earlier, it's probably good for where you don't want to be concentrating on reading out, uh, let's say, the context of an email message. 
this is a simple way of if you can see a bit to be able to just to read it to make it a bit more uh easy to um you know to process yeah I, th I think so too i think you can change what's called the opacity of the um icon to make it really dark on the light background so that's one thing you can do but even so it's it is a feature that i suppose you would need to have vision to the extent that you could probably read large print uh large hand documents in large print so that you could see this on the screen well enough to just activate it and get it going uh, unfortunately that's the way that it is on apple devices there's nothing like really massive icons that you can choose regrettably i'm just going to close that down for a second mail 54 unready mails so at this stage i'm just going to take a few questions if you've got any questions and then we'll have a look at some apps that can be used on the iphone or on the ipad that make it easier to use has anyone got any questions come on don't don't leave me hanging. Shirley, you must have a question. Might need to unmute your microphone, Shirley. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Michael. Yes, I, I've been using voiceover. Uh, yeah. I get into, I get in a terrible state sometimes. Three it, fingers, one finger. <laughs> yeah, half oh. of it. And like you say, I do feel like throwing it out the window because it seems to be out of control in the end. You can't seem to get the response you want. Um, but... Uh, I could, I, I'm going to try again, yeah. Michael, um, I've, got, I've got, if you've got the time and the inclination, yes. I've, got, I've got some tutorials on how to use voiceover from the very beginning through to things like reading news articles and emails and stuff like that. Yes. So, but you'll need a bit of patience and, and your wife would probably need to read you the information. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Maybe okay. if you've got a nice sunny afternoon, and you fancy sitting down with a cup of tea and, and learning how to use voiceover, then that's what we'll do. Send that yeah. over to you. Yeah, because um, we're going on holiday next week. We're going yeah. up to Rutland, a nice peaceful place. We'll do a bit yes. today. We can do a bit <laughs> yeah. today. Um, and that's going to be my homework, you know, when we're yeah. not going out. Because it's going to rain every day, you see, because we're going <laughs> on holiday. <And> that... <laughs> Some but wonderful always... bedtime reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So but I think I, I think you will crack it, Michael. It is frustrating, I, I tell yeah. you. So don't throw that phone. It's very valuable. No, um, I did think to begin with I was an old dog trying to learn new tricks, which is not not good. Not good. <laughs> no, no, that's true. So I want one. I want to become younger, and two, uh, I, I might then learn the new tricks more easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I mean, it's like it's like all of these voice related programs, whether it be on a computer or on a smartphone or whatever else it might be on. They they do take a lot of understanding and learning compared to just using your site. Yes. These are all designed for sighted people, really. Uh, you know, tap this, tap that. It's when well, you've got to use two, three, sometimes even four fingers. It's quite daunting. Yes. But, but stick got, at it, Michael. Stick yeah, I forgot when to use four fingers. Yeah, but never mind. Um, well, I've, because during when you, during your talk, uh, the icons came up really big, and and I just tapped it with three fingers, and it went it went back to normal. Yeah. Normal size. So yeah. I don't know what it might that might have been an unconscious response. So um, the more unconscious responses I do, the better, <laughs> especially when they especially when they work. Yes. Know. Yeah. Definitely. But, but just recapping these options here. So you've got smart invert. Yeah, I've got myself away, maybe that way. Which one? So smart invert is where, where you can reverse the colours on the screen. Yes. Yeah, you we've don't got get that. many choices. You get two, black and white or white and black. A bit like yes. Henry Ford, isn't it? Yes. I'm, I'm a bit surprised in actual fact by Apple that they don't include different colour schemes. I think, you know, yellow on black would be quite good. White mm. on blue would be quite good. I'm, I'm a bit surprised they just stick to those two colour schemes. Maybe they'll bring along more as time goes by. Uh, the yes. large, the larger text <laughs> option is very good for people that have got that failing vision, but still sufficient to read large print. Mm. And I would say that's probably one of the best features. 
and the mm. spoken, con spoken content is very good too, but you need that bit of vision. To yeah. Use. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to have a look at a couple of apps, a couple of nice apps that are free, they don't cost anything, where we could read printed materials, so printed documents. Yes. So I'm just going to go out of camera shot for a second and find some mm. something to scan. Yeah, so we've got CNAI. Right, thank you. Now we're on huge mm. font here. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this, 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 these, these apps for scanning text, they've, they've been around for quite some time now, but the benefit of them is they're getting better and better and better in terms of their accuracy. Mm. They're really very good. So if, on my knee here, I've got a what looks like a, a brochure of some sort. And I'm just going to open it on a random page. So we've got some text on this page here. I'm going to show it to the sighted audience. So I've got yeah, no I, chance. Sorry. I've got no chance of reading this, okay? Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. And I suspect a few people in this session now have got no chance of reading that. However, with my phone and an app, I can read that very easily and can work out whether A, it is worth me keeping it, or and B, whether it's important and I need to take some action on it. Mm. So at least I could say that's for the bin or that's for keeping. So I'm going to yeah. put that on my on my knee and I'm going to find an app on my phone. This particular one. This particular one is called Prismo Go. Okay. I've got that one. Prismo Go is called. Okay. Voice dream Prismo Prismo Go. So it's P R I Z M O space G O Prismo Go, and it's a free app. And I'm just going to open it up. Prismo Go scene description. And I'll show you the screen. So it's got a camera view at the top, and at the bottom it's got some controls for taking a photograph and then reading the text. So I'm going to point my phone as best as I can at this text. And then what I'm going to do, I'll put the phone directly on the text and I'm going to lift it about 10 inches away. So I'm taking a chance here picture. that I've got Look. it in the screen. Heading. You may have to do this a couple of times before you get the right scan. So I'm going to just take, take a picture. Take picture. Application settings. Vision impaired services. We are here to support people who are losing their sight and those registered blind or partially sighted. I'm just reading this text. Practical help for day to day living throughout a person's lifetime. We work in local mm -hmm. hospitals where our eye clinic liaison officers, ECLOs, will expertly guide them through the process of accessing the right benefits and services that can... help make life easier. Can... They also provide much needed emotional. 23. Here's they also provide much needed emotional and what to read this weekend. Untranslate English. Vision impairment. Whether the individual is born with an impairment or blind, or it is acquired later in life. And it's reading out the whole thing to me. Now I could I could re rewind it and fast forward it, but generally speaking, I just want to listen to it and work out whether I need to keep it or not. No, no, and that's no. actually a really good app, Prismo Go. And it's Gary, free Gary. App Store. Michael, yeah. How, how do you spell Prismo Go again? P R I Z P R I Z M O and then a space Go. Yeah, M O, uh, M for Michael. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now, I, I realize there are other apps, including Seeing AI, which I'll show you in a second. Yeah. But this particular one is quite simple. Seeing AI is a little more complicated in the sense that you've got lots of different options to choose from. In this yeah. one, you've only got one option, take a photo and read it. Mm. Yeah, so I, I use this quite a lot, this app. Okay. Um, the, the best scanning app there is available, uh, in my opinion, is one called VD Scan. VD stands for Voice Dream. So right. VD Scan. But that one you have to pay for. It's it's about seven pounds. Mm. It's only a one-off payment. But that mm. one, in my view, is the best one. It's more most accurate scan there is. But this one, considering it's free, did a marvelous job. Okay. Document. Mm. Another one, another app here. 
Prismo Go. Is Voice Dreams Trick Train. It's called Seeing AI. I'm going to find this one. And and seeing AI, seeing AI menu button. has at the bottom of the screen has a little like a I think they call it a tool bar, but I call it a tool bar, but they call it a channel bar. So it's, it's got different channels for for doing different things. And at the very bottom, we've got. <laughs> Seeing AI phone one new item. I was going to go back to that. Oh dear. Home FaceTime. Be my eyes. Last tray. Prismo voice. BBB. Seeing AI. At the very bottom of the screen, it's got this channel bar here. Short text adjustable. And it starts with what's called short text. And this particular option, short text. I can just, I don't need to take a photo at all. I'll just show that my camera on my phone at the text and it will read it. Sensory, sensory, services, site for Surrey, supporting and enabling people who are blind, vision impaired, deaf, deaf, blind and hard of hearing to God, www.siteforsurrey.org.uk. So all I'm doing with that, I'm just pointing my camera at the text and it's reading it. It's I, I don't have to take a photo or anything. I've got a poster on my wall here. I don't know what it says. I'm just going to put my phone at it and see what it says. Sight. Let's talk, please. Sight. For Surrey. Do you have a vision, impairment, and would like to learn how to make the most of your IT equipment? Then join our tech guru, Gary, from Sight for Surrey at one of the following free Wednesday webinars. Zero, zero, zero feet. Zero, zero, okay, so I just read the poster on the wall, which is advertising our Let's Talk Tech session. So it's brilliant for just if you're out and about and I don't know, you might be in a shop and you want to see the you want to do the price of something on the shelf or you might want to read a road sign, that sort of thing. Just take your phone out, put seeing AI on, point at the road sign, read it to you. Excellent piece of piece of software. Um it's still not 100% there yet, I don't think, this, this app. It still needs to be developed. But other options in this app, you have an option for scanning and reading a document, just the same as Prismo Go does. I can recognize faces, people's faces with this. I do have to take their photo first and store it in the memory for that to happen. I can scan and read barcodes on food, food items. Uh, the items do need to be branded, though. That it won't do Sainsbury's own or Tesco's own, but it will do all the branded items like Heinz and Walkers and I don't know um, what's that guy? He's got the fish, fish, fish chop. Uh, Harry Ramiston, all that sort of branded stuff. <laughs> it will do quite nicely. It will tell you the barcode information. It will tell you the cooking time and all that mm. sort of stuff that you might want to read. Um, it will recognise currency. That's English money, American money, and European euro notes. Recognize those. Uh, colors, color no, detection. It. And it's got a torch on there as well. So a really good app, this Seeing AI. It's free. It's by Microsoft. Um, I think it's a little bit overrated, to be honest. I think there are other apps that can do equally as good a job. But the benefit of it is it's you've got all those features in one place inside this app. I'm going to close that down here. See me Okay. So that's pretty much the features built into an iPhone for people with vision impairments. Uh, there are there are lots and lots of apps. I've got a, a document of my my favorite eight apps for the iPhone, which I'm I'll get Sue to share with you. That's our administrator here. I'll get her to share that document with you. And I will also put a link into our website where you can download other resources to do with the iPhone. So anybody got any, any more questions? Oh, it's all, it's all very silent, isn't it? Right, okay, far away. All right. 
Oh, yes. You know, um, you were saying about seeing AI can sort of recognise lots of things. Yes. Um, does, it, does it almost take on what other apps do? Like, my wife has a, an app for recognising names of butterflies. Zoom meeting. Back knows of butterflies, Michael. Green and plants. Plants and, and butterflies, plants. you know, names of trees and things like that. No, it, what it would if do... You're if you've got a special subject and you're interested in them. No, it, regrettably not, Michael. It would probably say colourful butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> or, I don't know, plant with lots of greenery and white flowers. Yeah. But it won't tell you what it is. There no. are, however, however, there are some apps that will. Yeah, yes. those. Well, yeah. My wife has those, but I'd like to compete, you see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I, I'd say uh, mine says it's a plant with white flowers on that and that and leave it at that. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's about as good as you're going to get out of it. Yeah. yeah. However, yeah. coming along in the very, very near future, you may have heard of this thing in the news. It's called Chat GPT. Yeah. And chat GPT is, is artificial intelligence that if you were to take a photograph of something, for example, a plant, mm -hmm. you could then ask you could then ask the app, what sort of plant is this? And yeah. it, would, it would go away. It would search the internet for photographs of that plant, and it would come back and say, This is a lily or this is a hyacinth, whatever it might be. Well, that might suit me, that one. Yes, yeah. yeah, but that, that's not really here yet. I think we're probably looking a good three, four, three, four months away yet before that yeah. becomes, you know, very, very popular amongst people. Who how, do you, how do you hear about all these apps? And are um, they in a magazine somewhere? I tend to listen to podcasts, Michael. Mm. Now, there's some good podcasts that are really excellent for information like that. Uh Notably, there's one called Double Tap Canada. Yeah. One called RNIB Tech Talk. Right. And one called Living Blindfully. Right. Those three apps, those three podcasts, I listen to fairly regularly. And that's where I find out a lot of information that is coming up in the world of Living Blindfully. Yeah. Of blind, all designed, all designed for blind and partially sighted people. Yeah. I mean, there are others, even In Touch on Radio 2 on a Tuesday yes. evening does cover a little bit of technology. Mm. Yeah. So I listen to a range of podcasts. Do you want me to email you what I listen to, Michael? That'd yes, great. that'd be very helpful. I, I listen to Peter White occasionally when I remember, 20 to yeah. 9 or whatever. But, um, yeah. We listen to his podcast. Yes, we will, yeah. It's a podcast. Um, you would need to... Either you can listen to them either on your Amazon Echo smart speaker if you've got one of those, yeah, yeah, or you can do it on your phone. There is an app on the phone called Podcasts, and you can search for the podcast and then download it to your phone. That right. may be beyond your skills at the moment, perhaps, but going forward, that would be the way that I, I tend to do it on my phone. So that would be going into settings, wouldn't it? No, you go into the app called Podcasts, yeah, yeah. So all right. On my, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll show you here, Michael. So on my phone, I'm going to get Siri to open podcasts. Open podcasts. Listen now, heavy. And in here, at the bottom of the screen, there are four different tabs. Selected. Listen now. You've got listen now, browse, um, browse. library, library. <coughs> and search. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go to search. And then at the top of the screen, I've got a box I can type into or dictate into. I'm going to go to the top. Rewind. Speak net. Minimize. 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 Play. But fast forward. All podcasts. Selected. Search. Okay. Tab. Follow every tip. Summer listen. South Asian top show. Podcasts by language. Top South Asian hair. Summer listen. Follow every browse categories. Okay. All podcasts. Search. Heading. Search mail. Deep rewind. Deep on touch. Dim. Okay. Rewind. Play. But reach. Minimize speaking bar. Expands all podcasts. Search heading. Search all podcasts. That's interesting. Search field. There we go. 
So when I when I go into the search field, I get a keyboard yeah, yeah. for the screen. So using the keyboard, I type the name of the podcast, or I can dictate it. I'm going to dictate. Yeah. I'm going to dictate. Double tap Canada. Okay. One eating, one meal. Hmm. Search field is editing all podcasts. They really does to you, and more of them. <laughs> it numbers. Emoji. Space. Numbers. Okay, my um, dictation isn't working. I'll just type it in. Comma. Semicolon. Emoji. Button. Emoji. Letters. Cab F. Fox truck. Cab D. Cab D. O. O. U. U. Space. V. B. B. L. L. R. B. B. Space. Space. Y. C. D. Z. A. A. P. P. Space. Double tap. All things social media. Double tap business. D double tap. A podcast for the fighting game. Double tap. Space V G V C C A A V B M M. I'm going to leave if you don't mind. Clear tech. Cancel. Selected. All podcast. Your library. Listen now. Tab. Delete. N. Double tap, a podcast for the fighting game. Double tap, your library. Okay, that's interesting. Search, search. Double tap. D double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap, button, <laughs> so, double tap, double tap, double tap. Okay, so I have, I'm, I'm having a bit of an issue here trying to find this podcast. Um, let's just see what I've got in my library. Mini library, tap, shows, fade, latest episodes, continue, button, latest episodes, catch up with all the shows you follow. Swipe right to mark as continue. Continue. Just going to grab a different phone, Michael, and show you yeah. how this works. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. <laughs> we don't want that. But so. some of that uh, information he was telling you about swiping right and everything, I find yeah. it never works. It has to be horizontal. Does it? Yeah. If you if you do it slightly up or slightly down, that's a different gesture. So it has to be like going from nine o'clock to three o'clock on a clock. Right. Okay. But it has to be horizontal. I'll get a ruler out next time. <laughs> so here I've got a lot of podcasts. And when I tap on it, it takes me into a list of all the programs that they've got. And it's just just playing now. Yes. This is an EMI podcast. Double tap. It's Tuesday. It's the twenty fifth of July, twenty twenty. So they're always in, they're always one day behind that particular one, yeah. Canada. Yes. But, but yeah, I, I use that a lot, Michael. Mm. The podcast. It's one of the biggest things I use on my phone. You can have a look at you can have a look at an analysis of what you've been using on your phone. Mm -hmm. It breaks it down into say, for example, it's say 20 minutes using the phone, mm. 10 minutes using texts, and in my case, about three hours using podcasts. Yes. Mm. But you can get an analysis of what, what you've been doing on your phone, like an activity log. Yeah, sc screen time, I think they call it. Yeah, it? there is a screen time, but there's also <laughs> yeah. a, a breakdown of what you've been doing as well. Mm. And podcast is my number one activity. Yeah. For me. Probably the most educational, mm -hmm. isn't it? Really? Yeah. 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 John W. Warren was tagged in a post, but you haven't seen it. Another feature built into the iPhone, which I omitted to, to show you, and I'm sure you're probably interested in this, is indeed Siri. Our travel revealed. Britain's ten greatest islands you must visit in your lifetime. Oops. Name. But Siri is a great 
thing to use. Do you, do you make phone calls? How do you make phone calls on your phone, Michael? Well, I do use Siri to say phone Julia or phone. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you do text messages in the same way? No, yeah. I don't actually. So you can use Siri in that way. You can just yeah. say say the following. Hmm. Send a text message to Gary Eady. What do you want to say to Gary? Hi, Gary, comma. It's getting rather warm in this room, full stop. I think I should put the fan on, full stop. It says, hi, Gary. It's getting rather warm in this room. I think I should put the fan on. Send it. Yes. Done. And it just sends it straight away like that. Now, no, I, I could add more text to it, or I could, I could delete it. Turn my phone off. So I could do do emails in the same way. I can read emails and send emails. So let's just mm. see how I can read my emails. Here we go. Read my emails. Last Saturday, Apple News sent you an email about know the signs of vitamin B12 deficiency, why fish and chip shops are disappearing and more. Do you want to hear the next one? Yes. Last Wednesday, Apple Music sent you an email about special summer offer, get three months free. Would you like to hear one more? Yes. On the 15th of July, 2023, Apple News sent you an email about 16 simple things that will improve your health this summer and more weekend reads. Would you like to hear one more? Read it. It says, here's what to read this weekend, Darv. Oh, great. <laughs> now, yeah. ordinarily, it would read out the email to me. So first of all, when I say read my emails, what it does basically it reads the subject of the email. Mm -hmm. And if I say read it, it will then read the content of the email to me. Right. And because sometimes I, I, yeah, sometimes I say, do, can you read the email that uh, I recently I uh, was notified about or something like yes. that? And it won't, it won't read it. <clears throat> it won't read it. No, not necessarily. <clears throat> okay. I've, had... I've certainly had quite a lot of success with it, and I've also had some failures. Mm. So it's, it's one of those things that I think... It's how it's, you say it, probably. <clears throat> I think it's a matter of saying the, what, the right phrases sometimes. Yeah. Um, yes. I use it. I use Siri for finding out what my battery level is. Let's have a see what I can do with that. No. What's my battery level? Battery is at ninety three percent. Okay, so that's quite a nice one to, to use. Yes. yes. Um, even even for those people that don't have vision impairments, <clears throat> it's quite a nice thing to use because it's at the top of the screen. It's quite a small little indicator up there. So Siri yes. will tell you that quite nicely. I can get Siri to turn the brightness up or t turn it down. So if I right. say turn the brightness up, turn the brightness down. Okay, I've made the screen darker. And so on. I can, I can either go all the way down to zero, all the way up to 100%, just yes. by saying turn the screen up or down. Now, the benefit of turning your screen down is it will save on your battery life. The brighter the screen, the less battery life you have. Yes. It's, it's probably the biggest drain on battery usage, the, the brightness on the screen, closely followed by Bluetooth. That's another big drain. Yeah. So... So Siri is a really useful thing. There are so many things you can do with it. I just can't list them. Um, I've been asked to create a top 20 things that you can do with Siri. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And I'll post it on our website when it's done. Probably be right. around the end of August when I yes. get that done. Um, so do keep going to our website and having a look, see what you can find. Mm. There will be stuff there. For I will, you. yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to put my phone down. I'm going to turn my computer back on speech. Christine, have you got any questions? Um, my husband has. <laughs> uh, she's just uh, wanting to know about. She has an Android phone. Is it Android. Yeah. yeah, we do we do another podcast another webinar on Android as well. Um, however, all these features are done on the iPhone. 
that if you go into settings on your Android phone and then into accessibility, you'll find features very, very similar to those on an iPhone. So TalkBack is the screen reader. Uh, on It's just called Magnification uh, instead of Zoom. That's the magnifier. And you do have one or two of the bits and bobs in there that are very similar. You can reverse the colors like you could on the iPhone and you can make the text larger like you could on the iPhone. So they're all built into Android. They've just got different names and slightly different locations. Uh, again, on our website, we do have some information about TalkBack, inverting the colors and magnifying for Android. Okay. So you might Thank want to visit you. our website. We'll get the address sent out in an email to you. Thank you for so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Does that does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see who else is here. Ruth, have you got any questions? How expensive is the iPhone? The iPhone starts at four hundred and fifty nine pounds, okay. and that's, that's that's called an SE twenty twenty two, and it goes right the way up to thirteen hundred and fifty, and that's called the iPhone fourteen Pro Max. Wow, that's a lot. So there are, there's a big range, but I think if you're going to get yourself an iPhone, you need to give yourself a budget of six or seven hundred pounds to get a, a, a decent quality iPhone. However, you, you know it is expensive. Um, Android phones are very similar; they they do start a bit cheaper than that. But these are not just phones, are they? They're actually computers. You can do everything on these devices. It's not a phone anymore. It's a mini computer that you're carrying around with you. And it will last you for five years quite comfortably. So it's actually it's time's quite, up then. It's quite a good investment, really. Australia. You can buy refurbished iPhones, ones that have been used by other people. And usually they, they use them and trade them in for a better one. And you can get refurbished iPhones from Apple themselves or Amazon um, for between two and four hundred pounds. Is that uh, I mean, <clears throat> so if you just wanted to get a, a fairly cheap one to to see if you could use it or not, yeah, yeah, uh, I'd probably get a refurbished one from Amazon. Uh, look for an SE twenty twenty two if you can get one. They're they're the cheapest ones, and they're actually very good. Even though it's the cheapest one, it's a very very good phone. Hey, thank you. Okay, Kathy, that. Kathy, have you got any questions? No, sure. no questions, Gary, but, you know, what you've spoken today is great. You know, lots on there that <clears> I didn't know that hopefully, um, you know, I'll be able to advise on now. So, brilliant. Yes. Thanks yeah. very much Please for doing do. it. No problem. Let's just. Oh, sorry, no that. questions. <laughs> <laughs> no questions, Your Honour. Yeah. David, have you got any? Oh, David's muted. Mute. David, are you still there? I am, Gary. I'm here. David, have you got any questions? No, but um, like the first speaker, uh, the last speaker, I found this really, really interesting. It's quite amazing to find out the range of stuff that we can um, talk to people about when we're going out and about and doing our stuff. So thank you for it. Yes, it is amazing, isn't it? You don't realise this stuff's there until you. No, exactly that. It's it's there, but you you know, if you pardon the pun, you can't see it easily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, if you didn't work in this environment, you know, is. You, you wouldn't be aware of hard, hardly any of this stuff, would you? you know, Absolutely. That's, that's the thing. I'm just going to go down my list here. Madeline, have you got any questions? Madeline? She's not there. I'm not switching the microphone on. Yeah, no, I'm there. No, I haven't got any questions. No questions. Norma, no. have you got any questions? Norma Hitchcock? There, and Peter, you've not got any questions, have you? Uh, no question, no, just a couple of observations on that last point about um second hand iPhones. My one and my wife, Pam, she's also got a, a refurbished uh, iPhone, so ours is an iPhone 7. We've had what a couple of years, maybe. Yeah, saved quite a lot of money by buying that way. It's been absolutely fine. I think the battery maybe doesn't last quite so long as, uh, as a brand new one, but um. Uh, can save a few hundred pounds by doing that and they're they're um they come with the warranties and so on as well so 
if you're interested in something that uh, doesn't maybe cost the full price, then that is an acceptable way to go, just as with uh, computers, of course, as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just the second point, as you were talking about web uh, podcasts as your way of uh, finding out what's going on in this world. Well, listening to uh, your webinars is a pretty good alternative as well. So uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, briefing us on, on this sort of thing, too. You're a bit like a podcast yourself. OK, thank you, Peter. Um, well, you know, going back to refurbished phones, one thing I would say is the vast majority of these refurbished phones, they don't often run the latest operating system on the phone. Um, some of them will, but you, usually they won't run the latest operating system. But that's not a problem if you just want to use it for, you know, bog standard tasks, you know, like reading web pages and stuff like that. They're, they're all absolutely fine. The only problem you will have is they won't sometimes run the latest and greatest applications that come out. So there's always a trade-off, isn't there, you know, with, with this sort of stuff? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But my, my general advice to people is getting an iPhone is get the SE 2022. That's the, the, the bog standard phone. And it's a very good phone for £459 is a good price. Although it does sound a lot, doesn't it, in one gulp? £459? <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, that that would be my general advice. But unless anyone's got any final burning questions, I think we'll finish off our session today here. Okay. And this this yes. will be recorded, or this has been recorded, so it'll go up onto our website yes. in around about two weeks. Sorry, onto the YouTube website in around about two weeks. Another one. So, so you can either watch it again and see how wonderful I was today, you know, or how bad I was today, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. And I will bid you all farewell for today. Okay. Thank you very, thank you very much, Gary. Thank you very much.